What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we got a dub to talk about. The Bulls beating the Clippers last night in a game that really restored the faith by a lot of Bulls fans in this team and the way and the heart that they competed with. It wasn't a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, but the Bulls came in in a playoff atmosphere game and got the win. We'll be breaking that down. Adjustments made by Billy Donovan, Patrick Williams stepping up in a big way and what that could mean for how he finishes out the season. And if he gets back into the starting line, we'll get into all that. But first, we got to get into that intro. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. I know. Listen, your favorite Bulls creator, <laughs> whoever it is, not me, whoever your favorite Bulls creator is, I'm sure they have delivered one of their most passionate and excited episodes in quite a while in the way that this team beat the uh, Los Angeles Clippers last night. It wasn't easy, right? The, the, they needed some some uh, mistakes by the Clippers down the stretch, some some timely fouls to be able to do it. But this team, the heart of this team, one of, one of the things that I've been saying for quite a while is that the thing that in this recent stretch that really bothered me so much is that for the first time in a while, I was questioning the heart and determination of the Chicago Bulls team. And with, with the way that they won this game, it helped restore that faith a little bit more. I want to see the Bulls team come back and, and now be able to build on this, use this as a momentum builder to go out and finish the final five games of the season, which are all against playoff teams. Now, I know there are going to be some pessimistic Bulls fans and some skies falling Bulls fans that say, well, we beat the Clippers who are the eight seed. What well, I don't want to hear none of that. The way that this team, Clippers team plays with Paul George, and yes, Paul George did not play in, in the, in the uh, overtime, which we'll talk about as well, but this team came in, and they did their thing, and they took care of business, and a, a couple of things that I definitely want to point out. While uh, DeMar DeRozan's 50-point game is going to get a lot of the coverage, and rightfully so, right? to be clear on that, it's a 50-point game from DeMar DeRozan. He definitely, definitely deserves some uh, a lot of credit and acknowledgement and uh, attention for that, but I want to talk about some of the nitty-gritty things on this team, some of the things that help uh, change the outlook of this game down the stretch. First off, Billy Donovan. I have been very vocal in talking about Billy Donovan's adjustments or lack thereof um, for a while on this team. And what we've seen in the last two games, and especially in this game, Billy Donovan made the necessary adjustments to put this team in a better position to win this game. Going to Vooch in the second half to really help make everything easier on the players out there on the court. That's one thing Billy Donovan did. Making the adjustment to put Patrick Williams in the starting lineup after that first half, that's one of the adjustments Billy Donovan did. Even so much as, as how the Bulls and the movement of, of offense, all those things, this team made the necessary adjustments, played with the necessary heart to win this game. Now, one of the things that are, uh, a few of the players that we want to talk about and highlight, Zach Levine did not have the best game, 5 for 17 shooting, but he still scored 21 points, gave uh, four rebounds, five assists, one steal from Zach Levine in this game. He did have two turnovers and timely turnovers at that, but the thing with Zach Levine, what we're seeing from Zach Levine is now that with since that knee injury, and here especially lately, is that Zach is making the proper changes to his game. If the shot isn't falling, he's making the proper passes. He's doing the correct things to still play winning basketball. And, you know, there was a, a moment in the game where there was a stoppage in, in ball, and Zach was on the floor trying to stretch out that knee. And it was it, that was a concerning sight for us, I'm sure, a lot of Bulls fans. But Zach did what was needed in this game. Nikola Vucevic, come on. Listen, everybody who still says that uh, is on the Nikola Vucevic high hate train because he didn't come in with what they were expecting, especially if you're talking about we should have kept Wendell over Vooch. Shut the hell up. Nikola Vucevic in this game, 22 points, 14 rebounds, one assist, playing key defense down the stretch. One of the things that I don't want to go overlooked is Nikola Vucevic switching on Reggie Jackson out on the perimeter and staying with him in the fourth quarter of this basketball game. The first time, Reggie Jackson did get by him. I think he got fouled and still got to the foul line, but, but other than that, Vooch stayed with Reggie Jackson in key moments very, very well, and that's not something that you want. That's not usually a situation in which is going to go favorable for the Chicago Bulls. It's Nikola Vucevic switching to a guard out on the perimeter, but in this game, this game, Nikola Vucevic did the correct things. Patrick Williams, listen here. The fact that Billy Donovan challenged Patrick Williams a couple of, a couple of days ago to say that it's not going to be about hype or promise or potential or any of that, he's going to have to earn that starting spot. Patrick Williams has since then put in his two best games since his return. This was by far his best game, hitting a clutch three, getting a momentum-changing dunk. To be four for four, 
two for two from three-point range, 10 points, 12 rebounds. And there are a lot of people who have been in the comments in this in, in on this channel talking about that Patrick Williams is not a rebounder. Patrick Williams is at least in the last few games has showed that he can be a rebounder when needed. And th that that lineup that was unlocked with having Io, uh, Zach, DeMar, Patrick Williams, and Nikola Vucevic has a great balance of offense and defense. And one thing that we're able to see the fact that what our starting front court in the second half, at least, and, and maybe going forward in games, had in this game, they had 32 points, 26 rebounds, two assists, two steals, uh, one steal, and two blocks from that starting for front court in Patrick Williams and Nikola Vucevic. That is a solid front court. That's what this team can do. That was how this team was designed to be seen. Now, Patrick Williams needs to show this level of intensity and focus and play going forward before we're ready or should be ready to say that this is going to be a consistent part of his game. But nonetheless, with all that being said, Patrick Williams stepped up in times where we need Patrick Williams to step up. And notice, and all that I mentioned is, is, is offense and I mentioned rebounds. That's not even to mention some of the key defensive times that Patrick Williams and moments that Patrick Williams played in this game. I love that Billy Donovan went to him. I love that he earned that time. And I'm sure that Patrick Williams earning that time and earning uh, the right to be the starter in the second half really hopefully builds his confidence and gets him prepared for playoff basketball. Listen, this Bulls team. And now, yo, wait, we didn't talk about DeMar DeRozan. 17 for 26 field goals. Why he did take some, some questionable shots. And like I said, he needed to be fouled down the stretch for us to really win this game. But at the end of the day, five rebounds, six assists, um, one steal, two turnovers, a, a pl positive plus minus of plus 19 and 50 points from DeMar DeRozan in this game. This was, this was, this was the win that we needed. This was the win that the team needed. I've been saying this for so long, questioning the heart of this team. You can't after a win like this. And hopefully this gives them enough momentum and focus now to build on that going forth for the rest of the season and into the playoffs. The Bulls right now, standings watch after winning uh, last night and, and the Cavs, I believe losing. We now, the lowest that we can go is the sixth seed. So for any of those sky is falling Bulls fans that have been saying, hey, the, the, the Bulls may be a playing team. The Bulls statistically can no longer be a playing team. Things would have to go so wrong for us to even get there. So we know that for the first time in a long time, the Bulls are going to have a true postseason and playoff berth for all the people who are doubting, all the people who are hating, all that. The Bull, this Bulls team stepped up, showed a lot of heart and determination. And the one thing about the NBA, listen, well, there's nights off, but I was going to say there's no nights off, but we, our next game is right on the horizon. we got the Miami Heat coming in town, and, you know, the next three games, Miami Heat, um, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Boston Celtics are all going to be key games in playoff seeding leading into the, to the end part, or leading into the playoffs in the final part of this season. We need to see this Bulls team use this game as a momentum builder, use this game as something to build on, use this game as, uh, as, as just a jumping off part to finish this season. Now, I don't expect them to, finish, to win all, all the last five games of the season. And I, I, no, I don't think anybody would expect that. But the one thing, rather than expecting them to win, I want to see this level of hard and determination. I want to see this level of grit. The Bulls' defense kicked it in and needed stretches in this game. So when we talk about the Miami Heat game coming up on Saturday, that's what we need to see. We need to see that defensive intensity. Has Billy Donovan now unlocked something in not only Patrick Williams, but what he can get out of that and what that front court of him and Vooch can look like. Also, trusting Vooch in the second half to go to him. Yes, you don't want to rely on DeMar to, to get 50 points for a win. But again, this is the win that this team needed. This is the win that this fan base needed. We all needed to see and to feel this. The United City seemed like it was rocking. Everything. It's so much excitement now. It's funny how things change with a couple of wins around Bulls Nation. It's been so down and dour for so long. This was the type of win that we needed and that we deserved. Now, Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler coming in. Bam. Uh, what he's what is Vooch going to be able to do? Vooch in, in the game against the Clippers, the, the Vooch in the Vooch in the middle is so beautiful, right? Vooch realizing how big he is, his size, the fact that the Bulls taking advantage when smaller players are switched. The moment a smaller player is switched on Vooch, Vooch needs to go to work. Now we need to see that consistently from Vooch. We also need to see the coaching staff consistently go to him in those moments. But this game did so much that they can they can try to do some of the same things against the Miami. There's going to be a big test. Nobody's saying it's going to be easy even at home. You saw how this game went. But the Bulls are going to have to focus, and with that focus, they can do damn near about anything. I said at the, at the start, starting point in this season, so often my phrase was always the Bulls can beat anyone. It switched lately to the Bulls can lose to anyone. This was a step in the right direction to getting that team again who can beat anyone with focus, heart, 
and determination. And we hope to see that against the Miami Heat coming up tomorrow in Saturday's game. Let me know what you guys think about everything down below. What were some of your most exciting moments in this game against the Los Angeles Clippers? What do you hope that they build off of and use this going into the game against the Miami Heat? Should Patrick Wood, did Patrick Williams earn to be the permanent starter now with the way that he played, especially in the clutch moments of last night's game? Let me know all of that down below. Thank you for always supporting, subscribing, all doing all that good stuff. Make sure you see red, don't be red. Go Bulls. I love you guys. Peace. And we got a big, big interview coming up on tomorrow's episode, the Saturday episode. And we're going to end this episode a little bit differently. We're going to end it with this. Hey, 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 hey,